So it looks like you were worried that this might give us an E2 reaction, which we don't want. So if we want to avoid E2, should we use something bulky or non-bulky? No. All right, notice how you should compare this with the example we just did just previously. If you go back to our previous example, in the previous example, we wanted to form a double bond. So we used the bulkiest O- minus that we could find. If you want to form a double bond, use a very bulky O- minus because that's going to give you elimination. But what if you want to do a substitution reaction? Well, then you use the smallest O- minus that you can find. Well, no one's smaller than this. And because this is a primary and unhindered molecule, we can be pretty confident that we're going to get a good yield of the SN2 uh, reaction over here. So these are the thought processes for syntheses. So notice that um, very often you have to adjust things to determine whether you're going to get SN2 or E2 because a lot of atoms can kind of go either way. O- minus can go either way. O- minus can be SN2 or E2. Well, how do you make an O- minus that's going to give you an SN2 low steric hindrance, low bulk? And how do you make an O minus that's going to give you E2, well, as much bulk as you can get? Well, the safest thing then is just to use tert-butyl oxide or sodium hydroxide, because tert-butyl oxide has the most bulk, and sodium hydroxide has the least bulk. Okay? Don't we need something below PCC, or is just PCC rule? Uh, he might want you to put in the solvent for this. I think that's, uh, you guys have seen this? Is yeah. this the solvent he usually uses? Yeah, yeah. If I'm remembering correctly, I actually don't have the solvents memorized for a lot of the reagents, so you need to look up the solvent he used in lecture and use that solvent. Um, on it. I think this is the right solvent for PCC. Okay, um, that's right. All right, and here maybe it would be safest then to put in an aprotic solvent. Why aprotic? Because we want to favor SN2, and we don't want, um, we don't want this to get protonated. Right? We, don't want to, we don't want to neutralize this over here, so aprotic solvent would be safest over here. Okay. Um, so wait, so each of the oxidizing reagents has its own solvent that it goes with? Well, PCC has this solvent. And remember that uh, for the most part, you're only ever going to use PCC, right? Because everything else has a danger of over-oxidizing. And I don't think he's going to want you to actually make carboxylic acids here. If he didn't want you to make a, uh, well, just in case, the other things like this. Chromium, anything like that? Yeah, and actually PCC has chromium too. Uh, and we just haven't drawn it. But if you use uh, this reagent, say, or TRO3, basically you add it um, in uh, aqueous acid. So you would use water, uh, acidic water, as the solvent for these. In fact, this is why these tend to over-oxidize, because they have to use water. Water is the thing that makes you over-oxidize here. So you certainly wouldn't want to use water over here. The nice thing about PCC is that it works without water. Um, okay, so again, this would be a good solvent here. I don't think you could be using this too much on the exam again because this would over, tend to over-oxidize. But if you were going to use these, these are the solvents. I think I put that in the handout. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so if you look at the bottom left of page one of the uh, oxidation of alcohols handout, it gives the solvent for chromium trioxide as aqueous water. I didn't put in the solvent for PCC, so you should put in the right solvent. I think, it's, I think we have that on the board. All right, well, let's finish up with this problem first of all. Okay, so to finish up with uh, this problem in uh, the first place, um, so what was the answer? I don't know what the reaction Remember, here was the problem. The problem was uh, to do a synthesis from here to here. So what's the answer? What is NaOH? Two is PCC. Yeah. So that's all we need. We're gonna ask, right? I'm sorry? And CH2CL2. And the solvents too, yeah. So the answer is just to list the reagents. Okay. Um, so when you're going to add a, a good nucleophile, you should add BMSO? Uh, yeah, if you want to do an SN2 or an E2, yeah. Um, th this is a good aprotic solvent. Yeah, this is a good aprotic solvent. Or acetone, any other aprotic solvent. But you can you know, as well just stick to one. Aprotic solvents are good because they, uh, they're they good for bimolecular reactions and you don't need to worry about them protonating your negative charge. Okay. okay, now the important thing here is to think about the thought process that we went through. This is what's important to actually learn how to do synthesis. So remember that when we started, everyone's instinct was to stare at the starting material and ask how to change it. Well, that's certainly natural, but we have to break that habit or, um, and add another tool, which is staring at the product and asking what's an intermediate that would lead to that. 
Because remember, what, 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 what were we doing the first time? When you guys looked at the starting material, you said something like, why don't we do an SN2 with cyanide? That was the proposal. The proposal was to do an SN2 with cyanide. Well, you could do that, but that doesn't get us any closer to here. Right? There's a million reactions we could do with this, but there's only one or two that would get us to the product over here. So in order, the only way to not waste time going down a million wrong blind alleys is to keep very focused on your goal. Remember our goal, so the question is not what is something you can do to this, but what is something you can do to this that will make it into this. So here's where the retrosynthesis was helpful. There was only one reaction we could use second. This should have been easy, because there's only one reaction we could use here. And then that made it clear, not only do we need to do a substitution, we need to do a substitution that will create an alcohol. And then we wouldn't have to go down any blind alleys like putting in cyanide over here. When we knew we needed a reaction that was going to make an alcohol, that made it a lot clearer what the right nucleophile was going to be. It had to be a nucleophile that would bring in this OH. So very often, the retrosynthesis is going to be much more efficient than the forward synthesis. So you have to think about both of those tools as you're going through the problem. Okay. Okay, so we just keep going. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So, to continue. Uh, and this is the actual notation I would use here. So again, when you're doing retrosynthesis, just put the product on the far right and then put the intermediate to the left of that, kind of the way I've written it here. Don't use this arrow for retrosynthesis. That's just confusing. When you're doing retrosynthesis, you should always draw the intermediates even if the question doesn't require you to because that's a useful thought process for thinking your way through the problem. 